Well, Bill, so glad to have you back on. Always glad to have you in and, and a, a special topic today. But it seems like time is flying by. The summer has gone by so quick. It sure has. Have you, I don't know if you've got, I know you're quite the golfer if you've gotten the chance to be out in, in golfing yet this, this summer? Two or three times, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not as much as I really would like. Sure. Well, <laughs> being the golfer, you kind of fits in today's message when we're talking about the sweet spot of God and being in that sweet spot of the will of God. Mm -hmm. And so give us the overview of exactly what is that sweet spot when we're talking about Christianity and God. Okay, well, as a, as a golfer, when you hit that club, you've got a, the sweet spot on that club is right there in the center. Sure. And if you can make that proper connection, the ball is driven way down the fairway. And of course, distance means everything to a golfer. Yeah. And, and the point I'm trying to make uh, in terms of our Christian faith and in terms of uh, spirituality is that when we are in the sweet spot of God's will, this is when we realize real abundance of life. Doesn't hmm. mean there won't be trials and tribulations, but it means in that sweet spot, we're in the place where we have that confidence of God going through the trials and tribulations and being able to enjoy the victories of life yeah. as well. Well, for me personally, I don't think I ever hit that sweet spot. My ball always <laughs> goes off to the, to the right or to the left. But I have that problem too. You're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> I get distance. It's just uh, maybe not straight distance. Uh -huh. But when we're talking about that will of God, you illustrate a few different um, almost... Um, distances that you can be from the will of God, whether it's peripheral or, you know, well, first the periphery uh -huh. of God's will. Yeah. And what is that? Well, I, I draw three circles and on the outside, that's the periphery of God's will. Hmm. And many people in their commitment to the Lord, it's a peripheral experience with the Lord. They, uh, they, they're Christians in name only hmm. because they're doing their own thing and they've got that quote unquote banner hanging over their head, I am a Christian. Yeah. But in terms of their walk and their lifestyle, they're really not. Then you've got a circle inside of that and that's where we're into the permissive will of God. These are people that have given over certain aspects of their lives, hmm. but they still want to maintain control yeah. over certain things that uh -huh. they don't want to let go of yet. And I think most of us fall into that category. <laughs> right, right. I know I sure do because I'm working to get in that center, the right. perfect will of God. That's the sweet spot. And it doesn't, when you get there, it doesn't mean that you yourself are perfect, but you are moving along in the way that God wants you to move, whether it's your, your, uh, your, your occupation hmm. or your schooling and the courses you're taking or whatever. You are looking to God uh, for, his, uh, for his guidance yeah. every day to make sure you're on track. Yeah. And so the perfect will of God would be that mm -hmm. center spot. Exactly. And that's where really we're just we're giving up all of our desires and our passions yeah. Yeah. and saying, God, fill us with your will at that point. Well, I use the scripture that Jesus uh, stated in John chapter five. It's verses 19, 20 and verse 30. And he talks about the fact that I can do nothing independently of the father. I can't hmm. do anything on my own. And he has to rely on the Father and he has to look to the Father to see what the Father's doing and he emulates what the Father does. Much like a boy does when he's walking along the street with his dad and he's walking behind his dad and he's doing the same thing that his yeah, dad is doing. Mimicking, because, right? Yeah, he looks up to his dad. Sure. That's what the Lord wants in terms of a relationship with us. We are his children. And so to get into that sweet spot of the will of God, what do we have to do or how can we do that to make sure that we are in that, in that spot? The thing we have to do is make a daily commitment. The Bible challenges us to walk in the spirit. And that is not a suggestion, Jeff, <laughs> that, that, that is a command. And to do that, it means daily prayer life. It means meditating on the scripture and, and understanding what the word calls for, the word of God calls for in our daily Christian lifestyle. Sure. So that's what we're talking about. And in the heart, that kind of a commitment is looking that, to say, Lord, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to say anything that's going to displease you. So I'm ever watchful and careful sure. and I'm consulting with you along the way in my life. Well, I like how you illustrate too, when it comes to us trying to determine what our sweet spot or what God's will for our lives is, you kind of give a few bullet points, starting with, you know, what do you love to do? Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and I can't remember the other two now. It's what do you what love you to do? What you are good at doing yeah. and then what you can do to serve the world. And those three, I mean, you're talking about your purpose, basically. Mm -hmm. When you are moving in God's purpose, that's basically the sweet spot right yeah. there. Because you're... You're moving in the area that God designed you to be in for your life. I'm making a transition in my personal life to get more into ministry away from the secular hmm. uh, uh, occupation and the like. And I am sensing it already. I'm getting there in that sweet spot. 